Hi everyone, this is Mr. Cervone. Welcome to my math channel. Into this geometry lesson, we will be learning about complementary and supplementary angles. So let's get started with the following do now. Segment BD is drawn such that it bisects angle ABC, as shown in the diagram. If the measure of angle BDC is equal to 7x minus 4, and the measure of angle ADC is equal to 10x plus 20, then compute the measure of angle ADC. What is the measure of angle CDE and why? So if you look at the diagram, what do you notice about the measure of angle ADC? Well, if you look at the symbol here, uh, we can see that angle ADC is a right angle. So therefore, we know that 10x plus 20 must equal to 90 degrees. So let's write this down first. First, we want to write that angle ADC is a right angle because of the definition of perpendicular lines. As we learned in our lesson in the previous YouTube videos, the definition of perpendicular line states that two lines are perpendicular if and only if they intersect to form right angles. Then we want to state that the measure of angle ADC is equal to 90 because of the definition of right angles. As you remember again, the definition of right angle states that an angle is a right angle if and only if it measures 90 degrees. Then we state that the measure of angle ADC is equal to 10x plus 20. Well, that's the given. And then that 10x plus 20 is equal to 90 by the substitution postulate. Now, all we need to do is just solve for x. And then we know that x is equal to 7, right? Because here we subtract and then we divide. So obviously, if you want to show all the steps, you would write the subtraction postulate and then the division postulate. But in the problem, we're asked to find the measure of angle ADB here, okay? Well, if we find the measure of angle BDC first, because it's given in terms of X, uh, we can find the measure of angle ADB by subtracting the measure of angle BDC from 90 degrees. So let's do that. So by substituting x equal to 7 into 7x minus 4, we obtain an angle for measure of angle BDC to be 45. And again, how do we get the measure of angle ADB? First, you write that the measure of angle ADB plus measure of angle BDC is equal to the measure of angle ADC by the partition postulate. Then that the measure of angle ADB plus 45 is equal to 90 because here we substitute it. And then finally, the measure of angle ADB is equal to 45 because we subtract it on both sides. Okay, and now we know that the measure of angle ADB is equal to 45 degrees. So how do we figure out what the measure of angle CD is over here? Well, if you look at the diagram here, now we know that this is 45 degrees here, the measure of angle BDC. We also know that measure of angle BDE is a right angle, so it's 90 degrees because we have perpendicular lines here. Therefore, this angle over here must also be 45 degrees. In this particular case, we could have also applied a specific theorem to find the measure of angle CDE. So the theorem states that if two angles are complements of the same angle, then the two angles are congruent. So what are we exactly referring here to? Because since all of them are 45 degrees, well, let me erase those first. And here we're saying the following, that if these two angles here, so if these two angles, they're both complements of the same angle. So we're saying that angle ADB is complementary to angle BDC, right? Because here we have a right angle, but we also, are saying that angle CDE is complementary to angle BDE, this one, right? And we know that if these two angles here, one and two, are both complements of the same angle, which is the one in the center here, then these two angles over here must be congruent. So that's a theorem that was developed in one of my previous YouTube videos. So let's summarize. The definition of complementary angles states that two angles are complementary if and only if the measure of those two angles add up to 90 degrees. 
So basically, in this case, we can say that A plus B is equal to 90. And similarly, we have a theorem pertaining to complementary angles, which is if two angles are complements of the same angle, then the two angles are congruent. Again, these are the two congruent angles that they're both complement of the same angle. So the question arises if there is a similar definition in theorem for supplementary angles, and there is. So for supplementary angles, we have the following definition. Two angles are supplementary if and only if the measure of those two angles add up to 180 degrees. So again, as you can see here in the diagram, we have angle A plus angle B equal to 180. And then the pertaining theorem to supplementary angles goes as follows. If two angles are supplements of the same angle, then the two angles are congruent. How can we interpret this from the diagram? Well, we know that angle B is supplement to angle A. But we also know that angle C is supplementary to angle A. Well, it turns out that these two angles, uh, so basically angle B and angle C, they must be congruent because they're both supplements of the same angle, which is angle A. Let's look at an example now. Let's say that you're given segment PB is perpendicular to segment AD as shown in the figure. We also know that angle two and angle three are complementary. How do we prove that measure of angle one is equal to measure of angle three? So in the statement reason table, first we state that segment PB is perpendicular to segment AB as a given. Well, what can we conclude from that? Well, here for number two, we can state that angle one is complementary to angle two. And as you can remember from lesson 2.7, when we introduced angle relationships and theorems in one of my previous YouTube videos, the reason is that if the exterior sides of two acute adjacent angles are perpendicular, then the angles are complementary. So now we just established that these two angles are complementary. Then the next step is to state the next given, that angle two is complementary to angle three. Okay, so let's see what we have so far. Here we're saying that angle one is complementary to angle two. So let's mark that in the diagram here. So we have angle one and angle two, they're complementary. We also know that angle two is complementary to angle three, okay? So what can we deduce from this? Well, we know that two angles here, angle one and three, are both complements of the same angle, which is angle two. Therefore, angle one and three must be congruent. So for step four, we write that angle one is congruent to angle three. And the reason is, if two angles are complements of the same angle, then the two angles are congruent. And then finally, for step five, we just write that measure of angle one is equal to measure of angle three, because of the definition of congruent angles. And this is how you prove it. Let's now look at another example pertaining to supplementary angles. Again, here we're given that we have a line AB. Again, that is actually an important given because we know that here we have 180 degrees, because if that's not given, then we don't know at this point if there is a kink or not. We also know that angle two and three are supplementary. How do we prove that the measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle three? So again, we set up the first given, which is AB or line AB, which is given. And at this point, what can we say about angle one and two? Well, since we know that we have a line AB and that is a straight angle, we know that angle one and two must be supplementary. So we have to state it. So what's the reason why angle one and angle two are supplementary? Well, as you remember a few Lessons ago in lesson 2.7, we introduced a new theorem pertaining to supplementary angles. And the reason is if the exterior sides of two adjacent angles are opposite rays, then the angles are supplementary. Then we state the other given that angle two and angle three are supplementary. So here, the reason for number four, why angle one and angle three are congruent is because of the theorem that 
we just introduced here. If two angles are supplements of the same angle, which is angle two in this case, then the two angles, angle one and three, are congruent. And finally, we state that the measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle three because of the definition of congruent angles. So that's basically it for today's lesson. Again, as a summary, today we introduce the definition of complementary angles and also the theorem that pertains to complementary angles. And then we introduce the definition of supplementary angle and the theorem pertaining to supplementary angles. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.